Hi, it's Lil Dicky. I just did an interview with the Zach Sang Show, and man, we talked about so much. We talked about my new song, Earth. We talked about Leonardo DiCaprio and how nice it was to be invited to his home and play pickleball with him. And there are other things that came up as well. I think you should watch. Let's save the earth. Let's do this. Hey, uh, beautiful humans. We got Dan here. Yo. And we welcome to the studio. Little Dick. All right. Hey. Hi, Dan. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Yeah. Are you great? Yes. Y- you should be on another level. I feel like I'm talking to somebody who really could be a superhero. <sighs> wow. That's crazy. I mean, you're you're setting the bar high. Yeah. With this new record of yours. Yeah, I'm. Ex- I'm. I've definitely never been more excited about a th- uh, a song and video. What fuels this excitement, and why is it different? Uh, for I mean, there's so many reasons. One, it's like uh, it's you know, 30 artists on it. It's like it's kind of like a, just for logistically, it's a, an accomplishment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two, I it's actually for like a higher purpose. You know what I mean? Like it actually serves good and like hopefully does good things for the earth. Uh, three, I I don't know. I've been working. Uh, the amount of time this song took to execute was probably the longest. You know what I mean? In terms of starting the beat to day it comes out, the longest gap of anything I've ever worked on. When was the idea born? Like two and a half, three years ago. Whoa. Yeah. So, okay. It's you and Benny, right? Yeah, Benny Blanco. Great human being. Best friend. Possibly your better half. Yeah, he, I mean, he's my he's my husband. He's my soulmate. He really is my soulmate. It, 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 as somebody who's been around the two of you together, yeah. it's, it's very special, the energy that radiates off. I know. It's, I'm in love with a man. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful <laughs> as a witness. Yeah. It changes me. Yeah. So... Who has the idea, and how does it actually start? Are you watching the news? No. So the thing is, it didn't even start with like a, uh, like it really kind of started with me saying, I want to make a song where artists, I, I've always loved animals. I was like, I want to make a silly song where artists play different animals. Like it really was not even, and the conception of it was not about environmentalism or climate shit. Like it really wasn't born with the right intention. You know what I mean? Like it was born as like a silly, dumb idea. And then we started making this song, uh, and just like infant state, like just like you know, hearing the beat and like me going like moo, like just like not, <laughs> and uh, you know, we didn't know what the song was. I just like we just had this the idea of like it being kind of an animal based, lots of artists playing different animals type of thing. And then back then I had like this vague understanding that like there was some sort of environmental issue on Earth. You know what I mean? Like I, <laughs> we're facing something. Yeah, like I knew that like we were polluting. <laughs> you know, we were, like, we were putting something out into the I universe. knew that we were doing something wrong and I knew that like in all likelihood this sh- this song like we should raise money to help whatever that issue was. You know what I mean? But I, I didn't really know what it was. And then as I started making it and then I was like, "Well, why don't I look into like what actually is going on?" And I was just blown away by the facts at hand. I can't believe the sense of urgency there. Like I we, like it's it's like now or never. You know what I mean? Li- but literally, you're not... No, not exactly. It's like literally if we don't change everything we do, like on Earth in terms of energy, food, conserving nature, within the next 12 years, if we don't change our fundamental way of life, the damage becomes irreversible. And like within our lifetime, the planet becomes like borderline unlivable in pretty much a lot of places. So that uh, so it, it started as this like silly idea. And then as I like looked into what I was even working on, I realized that it's like my life's work. Like it's like the most important thing I'll ever do. So it's like become like this, you know what I mean? It's like kind yeah. of, it's like, it was almost like I, it's like I discovered it along the way, which it, I think is interesting. It's something so much bigger than you. Oh my God. And your art is fueling that and bringing attention to it. Yeah. And educating people on it. And, but, but what's cool is it didn't start that way. No. The realization came somewhere along that creative journey. So how much of the song is done? By the time you realize this record needs, not much. it has to have one purpose. It's to yeah. help this out. Yeah, not not much. Like you know, there's freestyles of me like barking and mooing, <laughs> but like yeah, like yeah, uh, and like you know, not much. And then it just came together. I don't know. Just over time, like I was working. On, it was like I was working on Freaky Friday back then. Like it was like I literally started this session for Earth the same day we started Freaky Friday. What? Yeah. So it's like. 
that it almost like we started it and, and like I, it was always I knew I was going to work on it, but like it wasn't like I was like I got to get Freaky Friday done. You know what I mean? Like like I knew that that was going to be the first thing I did um, on this new album. Um, but yeah, like I said, it just kind of like it was a journey, and I and I'm just shocked that like this isn't the only thing everybody's talking about. Th- which is like kinda, the Earth is gonna. It, that's a scary thing, right? Yeah. Because this is impending doom this is something within can, our lifetime it's gonna yeah. affect us but a lot of people don't even realize that it is within our lifetime and how, how does how does everyone not know that i didn't even know i mean and i'm not shaming them because i had no idea until i made the song because we're distracted by a trillion other things yeah. whether whether we're distracted on purpose or just based on the reality that we all face and yeah how crazy it all is uh, it's a lot to process it's pretty crazy y- y- yes it's as cr- i couldn't believe it what surprised you the most when you were doing all this research? Just the the immediacy. I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Like in my mind, I was thinking like this is going to, you know, the pollution that we're doing and things are going to come back to haunt humanity in, you know, a couple thousand years, which is still a blip on the evolutionary scale. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't realize that like it's going to affect like my the second half of my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. You know, everybody says like, <laughs> do it for your kids and your kids. Yeah, I don't kids. even have a girlfriend yet. Like, I, I'm, I'm concerned with my life. Like, I don't want, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to run out of food on Earth. Like, oh. they're gonna have food shortages. Yeah, it's nuts. I don't. And think, it's, what? I was gonna say, no, you go. And it's like, it's not even like a political. It's it's like every scientist on Earth is like, yeah, it's like, I don't, yeah, f- yeah, this is gonna happen. And like everyone's like, no, nah, I don't know. Like, I think it'll be okay. Like the president's being like. Global warming, we could use some of that, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> he laughs at windmills. Windmills cause cancer. You're not going to be able to turn the that. windmill off. I don't so you get can't, that. You can't don't. hear the TV. But I don't want to make it a political thing because it's not, not even that. And it's sad that it has become a political thing yeah. because it doesn't deserve to be. We're no. talking about basic existence. We're talking about humans being allowed to live on a planet Humanity. That, that we've inhabited for way too long. Life, morality. Uh, Really, I just don't think people are concerned with the big picture. They just take it day by day, and if it's not happening tomorrow, they're like, "Whatever, we'll worry about it in the future." Well, I, 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 yeah, yes, for sure. But I think a lot of people don't know that it's coming within their lifetime. Mm-hmm. I think everyone just assumes it's going to happen like down the line, like different generation. They're like, you know what? I live on Earth. I'm going to maximize my life, and like. I understand that line of thinking to an extent, you know what I mean? But like if everyone knew that their lives, and that's why it's so important, like the kids are going to have to save the earth here. Is that the one message you want everybody who listens to this record to walk away with? Is it the fact that global warming will happen within our lifetime? Uh, I the, the message is, I mean, if I could have people remember one thing, it's that somehow all of life and humanity has led us to the point where we're at right now where within the next 12 years it happens to be up to the people that happen to be on earth right now to literally save the earth we have an obligation and a duty but also an opportunity like how sick is it to be like yo like remember when the earth needed to be saved like (laughs) we were a part of that Mm -hmm. like that's kind of awesome so I'm trying to like make it into an opportunity, like I, as a competitor, like I'm a competitive human being. I want to live my life and feel like I did the the best I could possibly do as a human being, an artist, making the world a better place. And like as a competitor, I want to like what a better like championship to try to fight for than saving the planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's the ultimate. That's like the that's game seven. <laughs> it's there's ten seconds left. We're down one, and we're in the huddle in a timeout, and like you know someone's got to diagram a great play. Mm-hmm. And the question is, who diagrams a great play? Us. Us, yeah, not me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You're I, hoping to inspire I, others yeah, to diagram. Yeah, like I, I'm hoping to like, you know, yeah, inspire, like make sure we get the right coach in there or like have people listen to the coach. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is pretty great. She has the Green New Deal. Yeah. But, you know, we don't want to politi- politicize anything here. Yeah, I mean... It all starts for me with the most basic level of awareness that I don't think people... Like, that's why I made this whole website to go along with the song that's, like, me in a turtleneck just explaining climate change for dummies. Because I, I, it's... You know, when you look, there are so many different ways you could try to learn about this, and it's... I wanted to make something that was, like, very entertaining and digestible and humorous in a way that was, like, just no barriers to entry to, like, learn about what's... Because the facts at hand are so absurd that... I think if people just saw it in a di- digestible form, they'd, they'd be like, they'd at least, how could you not care about, 
Like, I, I'm such a kind of person who doesn't care about things. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be the first to admit it, but how could you not care about not being able to live on the planet? You know? I think we take it for granted. Yeah. Hey, beautiful human, real quick. Sorry to interrupt. If you're considering going back to school, you got to ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits that you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of those questions, Arizona State University is the perfect school for you. ASU offers over 150 highly ranked degree programs, 100% online. You're going to earn the same degree as you would on a campus from wherever you are on your schedule. Plus, ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. If you want more information, text Zach to 35517. That is Zach to 35517. We'll put it right here. Learn for yourself why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why 87% of ASU grads are recruited within 90 days of graduation. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU online degree programs, text Zach to 35517. That is Z-A-C-H to 35517. Back to our conversation. Did you think? Did you feel like you needed to bring all these artists together to get people to care? Uh, I thought it would help. Yeah, I, I wanted to make the most accessible, entertaining, mainstream piece of content to like. You know, there were iterations of the song in its infancy that were far more inappropriate. You know what I mean? But I like dialed back the the crudeness as much as I could stomach because I still need to have it be like my type of thing. You know. But I, I didn't want to have it be like a thing that felt too dumbed down or watched, not dumbed down, but like uh, too PG. I got a lot of my moments in there still, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you know? Uh -huh. You do that to be family friendly, hit a wide range of audience, yeah, get I just the message want, I, out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to make something that like you could literally play an eight-year-old and, and they'd be like, yeah. And then you could also play like a 40-year-old and they'd be like, that's funny. And you could also play a 15-year-old and be like, he's right. You know what did you go through the same dialing back process just out of curiosity for a song like Freaky Friday? Oh, no. Because that song got some pretty <laughs> big mainstream airplay, yeah, no. and it didn't sound like you did. No, that wasn't dialed back in the slightest. <laughs> and I think a that lot of That was like it... pedal to the metal. Like, let's, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> let's see how far we can go. Yeah, truly. Uh, this one I wanted, you know, it's a, like, I, I, I pretty much, if I walk by any, like, man age 18 to like 35 i like they'll kind of know who i am but i'll walk by any child and they'll have no idea you know what i mean and i i think i just and they're the people that need to save the earth so i wanted to i wanted them to see this this video showcases kids who don't know who you are yeah doing something with trash cans and then uncovering this book yeah, that this tells book. this whole story. Yeah. One of the most beautiful music videos I've ever seen. Thank you. I, it took so long. Incredibly animated. Yeah. And it's, it's actually like bonkers almost. It is bonkers. I agree. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. It's so, it makes me, you should be. and the thing is, it's like, I, I have these ideas for songs and you execute them and you, they're so like, you always want, the song to be the best version of the song when you have like an idea that's like this big which i think it is but then like then you have a whole other hurdle of like i'm so easily dissatisfied with things unless things are perfect i'm like this sucks you know what i mean I understand. and it's so satisfying to watch this video and see how perfect it is for the most important song of my career was it always that perfect how many notes did you hit them with? oh my god so much it's crazy yeah. like i think the, i think it's like over 500 notes every, every time i get a pass it's like I sit there and I write, and it's like then I'm done. And every time it's like seven, it's like seventy three. And then I send them, and and they address every note. <laughs> they have addressed every note. Professionals. They're so good. Three Dar Riot. I mean, they killed it. What was more important to you while creating this? Was it the actual record or was it the video? Uh, I think they're hand in hand, but the song always feels more important to me than uh, the video obviously helps the song do what it needs to do but you know no one's going to watch a video on mute there are a lot of people going to listen to the song on spotify without the video you know what i mean so i feel like the song always trumps the video and, and the video is like an accessory to the song 
you've been in the position a couple times where you have incredibly viral music videos yeah. that really do enhance, and yeah. I think in the case of Freaky Friday, kind of gave birth to a good yeah. record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my video, I, I videos are, my songs won't, because they're, I'm making jokes. It's like, it's not, you, like, you know, there are times, I used to, when I used to like, go to labels and like play my music like i'd press play and like you know people like just interact with music in their own way like some people will like be on the phone and like i'm just thinking like wait like you can't not pay attention to this one lyric it's the it's the joke of the song but like not ever you can't ask someone to just sit and like listen to music and intensely like contemplate every single word that's being said but with a video it's easy to just hook them and make make them pay attention when you try to do you feel like you need to categorize yourself or put yourself in a genre no do you? I don't know. For the sake of like <laughs> coping and like navigating life, like, do you see yourself as a comedian? Do you see yourself as a rapper? Uh, I see myself as both. I, as, you an know, artist. Artist, yeah. Human. Uh, no, I see myself as an artist, and as an you know, I think as Lil Dicky, when I make you know my music, it's one thing, and I think. I'm making a TV show, and it's like at the end when it says like written by, it's gonna say Dave Bird. It's not gonna say written by Lil Dicky. You know what I mean? Like Lil Dicky is one of, and probably the most important thing that I'll ever do. But it's like I am not Lil Dicky. That's like one of my things. Do you feel proud when you see Dave up there on the big screen? Well, it's more that I just like when I'm walking down the street. Like I don't relate to, like I still get blown away when someone's like, "Yo, Dicky." Like I don't, re I don't feel like I'm Dicky at all. Like that, that like name doesn't like, I'm just Dave. Like I, if I, you know, I much prefer everyone that ever meets me to call me Dave. So it's not that I feel proud. It's just, I'm more like, I really hope that the general consciousness about who I am, like when people see me, they think, oh, that's Dave. Not Dicky. Yeah. Just cause I don't know. It's a ridiculous thing to be called. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a part of you. It is a part of me. And I, and I love, I wouldn't change my route name. I love it. It's funny. Um, but you know, like, if I ever met, like, Barack Obama, I don't want him to be like, man, like, Dicky, I love that. Like, I want him to be like, Dave, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Little Dicky, thank you for yeah, being Yeah, you know American. what I mean? Yeah. By the way, when you're saying this, you look like an apostle with uh, right. the brown, the brown, I'll take a picture of it. Yeah, I'm so warm now, I you, like it. You look like you'd hang out with Jesus back in the day. It's really cool. Definitely possible. Um, how do you actually... How do you get 30 celebrities on a record? <laughs> because they all have different contributions and yeah. different lengths. Um, you start with your friendships. Okay. <laughs> Which you, you tap into quite often. Yeah. You've, so, sh you've shot all music videos off of friendships. I'm a relationship-based guy. <laughs> um, I hope it has to be a two-way street because they're still your friend. Yeah. And uh, between me and Benny, we've got... A good amount of friendships and so you start with the people that you're friendly with like you, you know that you know they're gonna do it because it's like dude of course you're gonna do this for me like thank you and then you get those people to do it and then all of a sudden you say to someone you're less friendly with hey i've got this song with justin bieber ed sheeran ariana grande halsey you name seven people and you say it's all uh, to save the environment to save the earth like and everyone's playing a different animal it'll take 10 minutes to record your part like would you like to be a part of it and it's not even that hard of a pitch no um, it's weird if you say no. It is kind of weird if you say no. Did anybody say no? Nobody said no. Did anybody give you a piece that didn't make it in? I had a few people cut diff two different parts just so I had flexibility and versatility. Got it. Like just because you don't know because it's like it's until you hear them back to back to back. You don't know if like you want to have like a different type of voice in this moment. You know what I mean? Like I just wanted to have a few... Because it's like, it's weird how it was like my voice and then all of a sudden it's like one or two other and then it just, it kept, and then I just really wanted to have as much flexibility as possible. I get it. But everybody who cut it made it in. Yeah. So, no, Nobody who cut it is like not on the song. Did anybody give you a strange reaction where you're like, hey, I want you to play an animal in this song? Uh, no. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like they got it. Like I, I was always like, I had this one little part of the video, which was Ariana as the zebra. So I had like that part of the video early. Like they 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 did that for that scene by itself as like a test. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I always had this one little snippet of her, and it's just like I always would be like, it's gonna be like this. The greatest selling tool. You know what I mean? It's just Ariana as a zebra, and it's like perfect, <laughs> and it looks so, and it's just like, oh, I get it. Um, yeah. Did you pick the animals for people? Yeah, me and Benny. We yeah, I'm, yeah, because. 
you can't leave it to people to like you have to be like so you're gonna be a lion cub Halsey. you know what i mean i don't know that's a lot of responsibility well i mean i yeah i view it like a movie almost it's like we're the directors of the movie and here are your lines. You so, know what I mean? Like certain people added value, like Ariana during that outro, she, where she's like, and she's like, I love, we love the earth, we love this planet. Like she just made all that up on the top of her head and it's brilliant. And it like carries the second half of the song and she did that completely on her own and like we let a lot of people like, there are a few added value parts that people did that, because these are the most talented people in the world. Like don't forget <laughs> about that. Like and I wanted to soak their talent up. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio's in it. Yeah, Leo's in the house. What is... <laughs> Does that does that not amaze you? Just, I got Leo on the track. Just saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it does. I had literally held his Oscar. <laughs> what? I was like, Leo, can I see your Oscar? And I held it in my hands. It's kind of an uneventful statue. <laughs> I mean, I guess to you, cause... like it just like visibly. I don't want to. I want, I would love an Oscar one day, so I don't want to, you know, disrespect the Oscars. Are it's you... just the actual. I don't know. Yeah. Are you an EGOT <laughs> kind of guy? I would love to be. Is that how you... Yeah. And for, it, it makes no sense because it's like, why do I even care about awards? That should not be what I'm doing it for. But I just, I want to feel like I've done the best I possibly can and feel totally satisfied. And it's like, there are certain, I guess, things that can occur where you can't have achieved any more success. And the EGOT is it. So if like you, if you win the Emmy and the Grammy, and if you were you get like a number one, it's like there are certain things where I like know like oh that could not have performed better, and that would satisfy me in a way, but it shouldn't. It really should not. I wish it wasn't that way, but I would love to get an EGOT. Is it is it the accomplishment that fuels you, or is it the fact that like you have the opportunity to keep trying new things, and that's what does well? Uh, I think it's just the competitive fire in me that just like wants to. But who's your competition? Uh, everybody. But it doesn't make sense because it's like, why would I, why do I even need to be that? I don't uh, myself, yeah. me myself. I'm trying to do the best I possibly can. So it's like, when I make my TV show, I want it to be the best show on TV. Like that's what I, I tell I everyone. It. Like I, this this has to be the best show on TV. That's what I tell everyone that works on it. When I make my album, I'm like, this needs to be the best album. Like this needs to like come out and like shock the world and like really like everyone's got to be like, oh my god. Do we have a date for this sh hopefully shocking album? No. I'm still like two songs away. How many records do you have done? Like 15. Okay. I mean, it's a long album. I, I, That's I, good. Because it takes me so long to, like, I haven't put an album out in four years. 2015. Since 2015, yeah. I've only put out two songs in the past three years. And my albums, it's going to be, it's really going to be satisfying for people. But it's just, I'm, I just want it to be satisfying for me. First. Yeah. Are you listening to the records that are done constantly? Oh, yeah. Scrutinizing. Tweaking. <laughs> satisfying, uh, in which, that work. satisfying in which ways? Uh, I just think it's a huge jump. It's a huge jump in just the, like, songwriting, the way I rap, the way I sound, the, the, the nature of the songs. Like, every song is like an event. Isn't it? Are you pushing yourself? What do you mean? Are you pushing yourself to get better? From the last album, and in what ways? Well, yeah, but that just happens naturally. Like, the more you do it. Like, but yeah, I listened to my last album, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I even like it. And I like the thoughts behind it. I like the jokes involved, but I don't necessarily love me as a rapper all the time on it. Some songs hold up for me, but a lot of songs don't. And anything before the last album does not hold up at all. I think it's terrible. Like, I can't even listen to it. I'm like, why do people even believe in me back then? But they like me as a person, you know what I mean? And I think that, and my personality is so infused on the album. But I just think it's like, like, my last album, I can't walk up to Jay-Z and press play confidently and know Jay-Z's going to respect it. My new album, I know I can press any song and Jay-Z will respect it. So I think. Do you set that? <laughs> no, but like, do you like visualize that moment yeah. and set that as a goal yeah, in your yeah. head? I, gotta, I, I literally think like I got to be able to walk up and press play for Jay-Z. I swear I think that. that. And it's not even conceded because that could happen any day of the yeah. week. Jay-Z's going to hear Earth. Th that's right. He 100% he's going to hear Earth. Did you try to get Jay-Z on Earth? No. Okay. Have you tried to get him on a record ever? No, no. Not yet. I don't I don't I don't feel like I've earned Jay-Z yet. But yeah. you've earned Kanye West. Well, I didn't get Kanye. I got Kanye's not on earth. Kevin Hart plays Kanye. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but you need it. <laughs> but uh But Kanye is in it, right? Uh you know, the animated version of Kanye. 
Yeah, but so that's Kevin Hart playing the animated Kanye. Yeah, and I and the whole time I really thought it was going to be Kanye because I have a relationship with Kanye and like I was waiting to reach out to get him on Earth until the very end when the video was like totally like at his because I didn't want to just come in the in, like it's like Kanye I wanted yeah. to have and then so I left myself a very small window to get Kanye and. And he's the hardest man to get a hold. He's like, changed his number, changed his email. It was like so hard. To, I couldn't get in the same room as him. Um, and then I was just running. And then the video was so far along that it had to be his avatar coming out and being like, and I'm Kanye West. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I reached out to Kevin Hart and I said, would you play Kanye West? He said, yeah. Because <laughs> I love, I still love the joke. Yeah, and it's great. I still love the joke. <laughs> I think it's even funnier that it's... <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah you, can, you can look at it that way. Is it... Okay. Is it kind of crazy for you to think that you were able to get Leonardo DiCaprio on the record, but you couldn't track down Kanye West? Well, I don't... I, I think They're icons in their own way. Yeah, Kanye is like... To me, it's like... I almost am happy I couldn't. It's like, it adds to the, the allure of... It's like, yeah. that's what I see Kanye as. Like, a guy that's just... Like, I'm okay. I'm not mad at Kanye. and I love Kanye. I just, you know... There'll be a time where I work with Kanye. Jay-Z as well. Yeah. Who else is on that list? Do you you have a list of people you want to well, work with? Well, not like an actual physical, tangible list, but it, in my head, yeah. 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 I mean, number one, Drake. Cool. You know. Put it out there. Uh, he's my favorite. I, I get it. Who doesn't like Drake? I, I have yet to meet a person. Well, if someone doesn't like Drake, I'll literally get in an argument with them about <laughs> why they don't like him. What, what, give me one foolproof bulletproof reason as to why somebody should love Drake I mean he just makes better songs than everybody, <laughs> everybody like, else on such a consistent level like when Drake puts a song out and it's not my favorite song of the moment I'm disappointed think about that bar where it's like when like if Drake puts a song out and it's not one of my favorite songs honestly that I've heard in years I'm like man which is like such a ridiculous bar to adhere to. I get it. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, he's never missed ever. He's an icon in that album. I love Double him. sided. I just love Drake. So many records on the thing. Um, I have a long list of people I'd love to work with. Are the songs on your upcoming album as big as Freaky Friday and Save That Money? Because there's tons of features. They're just these big, like, sounds. Some. Okay. I mean, Earth is probably like the most epic song on my album. Uh, but there, there, there are other like, uh, yeah, like epic things for sure. There and there are other things that are like uh, weird interludes that are like not at all mainstream songs, but like are my favorite things I've ever done. You know what I mean? My fans are gonna, everyone's, my album's gonna be great. Okay, it's really gonna be great. You don't need to convince him. No, I just want to know, like, what... Do you believe in me? <laughs> I, oh, I believe in you. I just have no idea what to expect, because... It's, 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 it's definitely uh, not what you expect, I think. I don't know. Is there a little bit of what you expect and a little bit of not? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's all over the place. Were you challenged by it? I'm still... Ch I haven't even finished it. I've been working on it for 40 minutes. I'm challenged by it. Every day I work on this goddamn album. I can't finish it. What, how, how long is the <laughs> longest song? Like not no. How long has it taken for you to like Earth? Three years. Three years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah. It's 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 so all over the place. It's like one song is like a really eight oh eight heavy hard rap song. The next song is like me singing over an acoustic guitar. You know, it's like it's all over the place. But the common thread being my dynamic personality. A little dicky. Yeah. How did so so? How did Justin Bieber? Let's say, how, why is he a baboon? Baboon. Well, I just really wanted to set the tone with Bieber and have him be the first artist. Okay. You know, I, was, I wanted to be like, okay, let's come off the gate with like Bieber. <laughs> that was my strategy there, and like just go Bieber Ariana. He's a good monkey. And then like some of these make sense, you know, like Wiz Khalifa being a skunk, Joel Embiid, Africa, but like why Brendan Urie as a pig? Uh, uh, he's just a friend, and like I mean. Yeah, so you're gonna have to make random choices at some point, you know. <laughs> uh, but I really like the way he delivered the line. Like, and I hear it and I laugh. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's just some choices, like I said, are gonna seem random. So, like, how was it saying, "All right, Lil Yachty, you're gonna be HPV"? That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> how does he receive that? He was like, I was like, I, I tried to get ahead. I was like, hey, so I showed him the art, the zebra. I said, I said, what I want you to be, 
<laughs> that was the definitely the hardest one to explain. You know what I mean? Like that was the weirdest one. I was like, I want you to be a disease. Because <laughs> it'd be so funny to have like in the middle of this whole thing where there's animals just to have a random disease. And he was like, All right, bet. And then he did it. <laughs> You, you but that was the that was, do it. that was the conversation I was like being like how am I gonna phrase this like yeah that was the one I had to think about was, was that the one you were most worried for the, the mo- it wasn't the most I knew that was the one that was gonna be the most like what you know everything else is kind of really digestible in terms of oh you want me to be an elephant great they get it you want me to be HPV <laughs> um, but he was with it so yeah. And I think he, his voice, like, isn't his voice the perfect voice to be HP? It's like, it's like, I really feel like I was very, it's well cast. When, when you think <laughs> HPV, you hear his voice. Well, I don't, for, I guess from here on out, yeah. <laughs> it, it's really just crazy looking down this list of everybody you got to be on the song. Yeah. Like, some people try to go and get one feature and they can't do it. And you have the biggest artist in the world playing animals. I know. I, that's why I love this song so much. It feels like an like a very big accomplishment in so many different ways. It's unreal. Yeah. Does it change the definition of a record for you, just in terms of, like, what you need to do to be great the next time around? Uh, I don't think it... I think that this will always be... I mean, I'll have other things that are as big. I'll never have a song bigger than Earth. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have a bigger song than Earth. And the message and what it's the me- exactly do. exactly. Um, I think it raises. It, I think for me, it's like I've always wanted to approach music in a different, like, strategic way. Like, I didn't I, like. I wanted to have artists be, you know, have use them differently than they've ever been used. And I just think Earth is like the best showcase of my out of the box thinking in terms of how I can uh, weirdly use my personality and affect the music industry in a different type of way. I think that sets the bar high for what, yeah, it shows me anything's possible in a way. So if I want to get an even crazier song down the line, I think people will trust me more because they'll see what I did with Earth. And you're confident because you've tackled it before. Yeah. Dude, Leonardo DiCaprio is on your record. Yeah. When we introduce this on the radio, am I expected to say featuring all those people? (laughs) Just say Lil Dicky. Oh, (laughs) got it. You know? (laughs) How did that pitch meeting go down with Leonardo DiCaprio? Like, where was it? First, before I could even get to Leo, I met with the head of his foundation, this woman named Justin, right? Cool. Who I love. And I played her the song and she literally got like emotional. She like started like tearing up because, I mean, this woman spends her whole life, 20 years at the front lines of environmentalism, like just trying to get everybody to care. You know what I mean? And she just knew that this was like, they've just been waiting for something this accessible to like get people to give a you know what I mean? It's like hard to get people. Like Leo's been just like knocking uh, down doors to just to get people to care, and it's for like years. for years, and it's just not that easy to do. And uh, I guess I just needed the uh, ultimate dick and fart joke guy to come in, and, <laughs> and you know, like I, I don't know. I just think it's uh, I was surprised. It was so funny seeing her get so emotional when the song is like so dumb and silly. You know what I mean? She's like getting choked up by like. How's it going? I'm a cow. You drink milk from my tits. You know what I mean? And it's like, but I could just see that this really would move the needle in a way that like their typical work might not be able to do in terms of just general awareness. It means so much more. Yeah. So she approves and then she passes. She approves. She's like, okay, I'm, I got to get this in front of Leo. It got in front of Leo, not in front of me. Like Leo heard it on his own time. I wish I could have been there to see him react, but his reaction was obviously positive enough to where... I then had a meeting at Leo's house. Whoa. Whoa, so you went to uh, Leo's. Yeah, I went to Leo's house. What'd you wear? <laughs> it's so funny. I like was like, well, what do I, I was like, I can't just like come in like an Uber. Like I need to like be like in an <laughs> eco-friendly car. And like, you know what I mean? Like I had to like, I was like, do I, what do I, do I wear like, like I thought so much about all that stuff. Um, and it was just, he's a normal, cool guy. And like, we just sat and he had a great view and uh, we talked. And just, the thing that really stuck out for me is how, it's not like an act. He can't, like he literally cares so much that he'll just you'll be sitting and talking with him and he'll just go on and just get angrier and angrier. And like by the end of it, he's like, I'm so sorry. I just I'm so passionate about this stuff. And there's no cameras. It's like him just talking to me. He really cares. And we'll play pickleball. Yeah, I'm literally <laughs> playing true. pickleball with Leo. <laughs> That's really special. Yeah, it really is special. Wow. 
Have you only played with him once? I played with him a few times. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I got on the text thread like for the pickleball. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm involved. An honor to have you here with yeah. us right yeah, yeah. now. They tried to get me to play yesterday. But, I said, Lee, are you kidding? I got Earth come out in three days. I'm swamped. <laughs> I'll make time <laughs> for you. Get out of my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Earth, listen to the record. Little Dicky, you are a special human being. Really. Thanks, yep. Thanks for uh, hanging out and giving us time and energy today. It means Man, a lot. Thank you, and I hope you like the song and the video, and let's save the Earth, huh? I do very much, and I am so down to take on this mission with you and hopefully with everybody else we share this planet with. So. Guys, it's now or never. We have to, literally, we have to do it right now where we're all, can I curse? Yeah. F we're all fucked in our lifetimes. Like, don't you want to survive and, like, enjoy life? Yes. So we have to. Like, let's, you know, yeah. let's insist on change. And what you're saying is no bull squash. So no, together, like, uh, we yeah. win. We can do it. It's really, not, it's, I, it's, I'm sure it's hard, but if everybody cares, it's not going to be hard. Truly. Beautiful. Yeah. The link is in the description. Take a look if you want to learn more and really listen to Earth. Little Dicky, everybody. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to applaud myself. So. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. We love the Earth.org. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description. And also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.